of General Staff, Lieutenant General Puttick, today inspects secondary school cadets in camp here at Narrow Neck. Under a new system, the boys get a thorough training in more and varied weapons. When it comes to handling the bofers, they make smart work of it. Of course, there's a wild rush when it's bathing parade and the water fills up with boys who come from the North Cape to Tamaranui. They later hear an address from General Puttick on the importance of their work. We in the army found during our mobilization of those enormous forces for home defense against Japan, that the man who had had senior cadet training was of very great value to us in our work of organizing those forces. At Evans Bay, Wellington, the national yachting championships for Tauranga and Idle Along classes open in brilliant sunshine. Visiting crews get busy trimming and rigging their boats for the first race. Here comes the start of the Tauranga class races. These Tauranga class boats, only seven feet in length and all of the same design, are sailed by skippers under 16, some of whom built their own boats. Auckland sailed well. Wellington lost a halyard in the first race, but won the next three, the championship and the cup. In the Idle Along class, five boats get away. These yachts, 14 foot 8 in length, are also of standard design. On the long beat to windward, Wellington runs into the lead and is first round the buoy. Again, Wellington won the championship. Tough luck for the other boats who found themselves in Wellington waters up against a boat aptly named Tornado. Since war began, these Wellington voluntary workers of the Red Cross Society have packed 6,000 tons of parcels for prisoners of war. A million parcels in all, and here's the millionth parcel coming off the packing line. The Prime Minister is here today to receive it, and to thank these women whose work has meant much to many a prisoner of war. With energy and enthusiasm, they've packed their parcels at a speed of seven a minute, which is nice work by these parcel packing mamas. In a Hastings woodwork factory, this lathe is making wooden stoppers for army water bottles. Completely automatic, it shapes the neck and top of the stopper in one action, and turns out millions of first-class substitutes for unprocurable cooks. Two hundred miles away in a Wellington factory, metal sheets are being fed into this rolling machine. Two revolutions and the flat sheets become young water bottles. Before the war, this factory made electrical appliances. Now it turns out 6,000 bottles a day. Two good turns and it's down the chute for side seaming. Here the two edges are clipped together by hand and sealed by machine. Here the bottles are boiled in a caustic solution. This fearsome process is necessary for cleaning off all dirt before enamelling. Enamelling part one is like the old nursery game of sinking a bottle in the bath. Part two consists of waving the bottle in the air so that the enamel spreads evenly inside. Harden the enamel, the bottles are baked in giant electric ovens. At a temperature of 1600 degrees Fahrenheit, this only takes five minutes. When baked, army inspectors peep down their throats to see if their insides are healthy. Then Martha puts them through the water test. The empty bottles are sealed with rubber stoppers and inverted in hot water. The heat expands the air inside, so if there are any leaks, the air comes out with a rush defective bottles are destroyed. With covers on and Hastings made stoppers attached, they're ready for packing. Well made and doubly tested, these New Zealand water bottles will be boons to thirsty soldiers, whether route marching trainees or jungle fighting veterans. From this factory have come no less than two and a half million water bottles in the last four years. Another 7,000 go to join them and more are on the way.
On a beautiful South Seas island is Fiji's Central Leper Hospital, usually known by the island's name of Makunai. This is the leprosy isolation and treatment center for New Zealand, the Gilberts, Cook Island, Samoa and Tonga, as well as Fiji. Stretching across flat areas of the island are hospital buildings, villages, gardens and plantations, where live some 600 patients, as well as medical and nursing staff. Most of the patients live in villages, among others, of their own race. For more advanced cases, there's the hospital itself. Here, some of the women patients are lining up for treatment. The majority of the patients come from the islands where, it is known, leprosy existed long before Europeans ventured into the South Seas. As much as possible of the work of the station is done by patients themselves. The women do laundry and mending work for the men who are engaged in farming and various public works. Boat building is the job for the men where they make use of their natural skill. For the women, there's needlework under the guidance of one of the 16 missionary sisters of the Society of Mary. The island is fertile and growth rapid. Since 1928, over a thousand hydnocarpus trees have been planted. From these come the nuts, which are husked and ground to win the valuable Cholmugra oil used in the treatment of leprosy. After being ground, the nuts are pressed and the oil collected. As yet, the trees are producing only about 20 gallons of oil a year, about half the requirements of Makunai. This oil is of paramount importance to the island. Though almost every known treatment and suggested remedy has been tried here, this oil has proved the most successful. It is given by injection. On Makunai, life is made as pleasant as possible for the patients, thanks to donations from various sources, including the New Zealand public, and above all, thanks to the selfless devotion of those who stay here to work.